So the title of the sermon tonight is A Warning Against Witchcraft. A Warning Against Witchcraft. Now you say, Exodus, you've got to read all of Exodus to, to get that. Well, you know, it kind of shows you that there's some things that God takes pretty seriously. I mean, God goes through here and talks about, you know, if somebody's stealing, if something's borrowed and comes up lost. You know, he kind of goes through small claims court, right? And he deals with all these different things that are, you know, we would say all these things are important. You know, making restitution. If somebody's stealing something from you, you know, they should pay back double. They should pay back, you know, fourfold or, or whatever. You should have that made good. That's important. And if you don't think it's important, you know, well, wait till somebody steals something from you. You'll probably feel differently. You know, we'd, we would say everything in this passage is important. But, you know, there's a quick verse there in verse 18 that just says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. You know, and it seems like we're living in a world today where witchcraft, you know, is, is being promoted and accepted in our society. It's being accepted. It's being promoted. It has in the past. And, you know, and there's no new thing under the sun. You know, witchcraft is something, and we're going to just scratch the surface tonight on the amount of scripture there is that deals with witchcraft and seers and sorcery and all these things. You know, we could go and look at all the different nations that God mentions and how they practice sorcery and witchcraft and all these wicked things that God condemns and even condemns here with the death penalty. But we're living in a society today that is promoting witchcraft. We're living in a society today that has no problem with things that God calls abominable. You know, and this is an appropriate sermon this time of year because of the fact that we're coming up on Halloween. You know, and, you know, I'm just going to come right out and say, you know, we don't promote Halloween here. We don't celebrate Halloween here. I believe it's a wicked holiday. And, you know, people are welcome to do whatever they want on Halloween. But you'll never, I'm not going to dress up my kids as ghouls and goblins or whatever else and send them out there to go run around with other kids who dressed up as ghouls and goblins and celebrate uh, all the, all the, just the, the death culture that's out there. I mean, that's what Halloween is. I mean, you can't really, I mean, you can't sit there and tell me it's not about death. I mean, go to any Home Depot or Walmart right now and they're selling the, selling the decorations. They're frightening. You know, my kids, you know, they, you say, well, your kids are sheltered. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You know, you're right, my kids are sheltered. You know, that's what you do when bombs are falling. You take shelter. And we're living in a society today where there's just these demonic, you know, bombs are being dropped on our children's minds, and even our own minds. And it's good to shelter your kids. Now, I'm not saying, you know, it's, it's not good for them to see what the world is like. You know, they can learn a, a lot about the world through just, you know, living. You know, even a godly life, they can see what goes on in the world. But take your, you know, I take my kids to places like, Wal you know, Walmart, Home Depot, and stuff like that. And you have to say, look the other way, son. Don't look at that. You know, they'll, it'll literally give them nightmares. Some of these decorations that people put out there, you say, oh, well, that's silly. Yeah, but that's because I'm not at home, you know, feeding my kids this stuff every other day of the year. Right. You know, they don't, they don't sit there and watch all these, these shows with the ghouls and the goblins and the zombies. And, you know, and, and we've been, you know, our generation has been fed that. You know, people my age, you know, we've gone through that. You know, and that's why people our age, you know, older people or people my age, you know, they're still obsessed with this stuff. I mean, how else do you explain all the zombie shows? Right, all these, these there's just, it's just zombie movie after zombie movie after zombie movie, just whole shows dedicated to zombies. You know, I mean, I'm working with grown men, you know, not anymore, okay, because I work for the church. But in the past, you know, I'm working with grown men who are coming in and talking about, you know, what happened in the latest zombie show. You know, who killed who? Who got turned into a zombie? Right. It's weird. You know, it's like, you know, I, they must have watched Thriller too many times growing up or something. Like that. It's like, get over it. Right? But, so what I'm saying is that we're desensitized to it. But you, know, you know, kids that are growing up in a godly home, hopefully, you know, if it's a godly home, they're not being desensitized to it. And when you take them out in, this, in the world today, this time of year, I mean, it's just all kinds of ghouls and goblins. And you know what? A lot of witches, too. That's probably one of the most popular costumes this time of year is a witch. I mean, I can think of several people in my past that I know and have dressed up as witches, and so on and so forth. And it's being promoted today. And the biggest day of the year for witchcraft and all this kind of stuff is Halloween. Okay? So that's why we don't participate in it. You know, I'm not going to you know, come to you and fi ask you and find out. Or if I find out, I'm not going to come to you and condemn you. But I'm just saying it rod and clear for everybody to hear right now that we don't celebrate Halloween. And that's why we have a chili cook-off. So you can come and be with God's people and have some good, clean fellowship and not have to you know, go out and fill your minds with all this junk. You say, well, you're taking it overboard. Well, you know what? God, God's pretty serious about this. You know, and, and we shouldn't, you know, even, 
You know, it's a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. You know, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't even have the appearance of evil, the Bible says. Right. You know, even just playing pretend, oh, they're just dressing up, it's just pretend. But, you know, it, it, it's the appearance of evil. You know, it's promoting these things, promoting things that God condemns. You know, and I'll even say this, even the superheroes, they say, well, my kid's not dressing up like a witch. I'm going to dress up like Wonder Woman. You know, my kid's not dressing up like a zombie. He's going to dress up like Superman. You know, I, to me, that is, that's supernatural in itself. I mean, look at these, these, these superheroes, the things that they can do. They're godlike. You know, even that is, is a, I believe, a form of sorcery. It's a, you know, and this is my opinion, you know, and I'm, and I'm saying that, you know, that, you know, there's the clause right there. But that's how I feel about it. I mean, Superman, I mean, he can fly. He can turn back time. I mean, he can do all these, like, things that God can do, right? I believe they're demonic in nature as well. You know, these are supernatural things. What about all the children's books? I'm saying the kids are just being barraged with this stuff today. And it just seems like the whole, our whole culture, even in our churches, it doesn't get talked about very much. It just kind of gets glossed over. You know, or maybe it's just that so many of us have gotten away from that stuff that we don't really realize how bad it is. But, I mean, it's in all the cartoons now. It's in all the children's books. Witchcraft, sorcery, magic spells. You know, My Little Pony, you know, with their little spells that they cast and everything else. It's out there. The television shows, you know, how about, here's a throwback. You know, let me, let me, let me get everybody. How about the Wizard of Oz? Right. right? I mean, you want to talk about witches? You say, well, what's so bad about that? Well, other than it's an allegory for the fiat money, money system. I lost everybody with that, right? <laughs> follow the yellow brick road. Follow, you know, yellow bricks, gold. How do you measure gold in ounces? Wizard of OZ. You know, he gets to the wizard, everything's green. No? Not get anybody? <laughs> All right, some of you with me. That's another sermon. But, you know, it had a couple of witches in it, right? Yep. You know, it had the good witch and the bad witch, right? You know, which one are you? You know, there, newsflash, there's no such thing as a good witch. Yeah. You know, not to God. God. Is that what God said here? Thou shalt not suffer a bad witch to live. <laughs> you know, thou shalt drop a house on bad witches only. <laughs> no, he said don't suffer a witch. Yeah, right. Well, God, is it a good witch or a bad witch? Yeah. All right? You know, I don't care if she shows up in a pretty little bubble, you know, or she's got a green face and a long nose. You know, God says she's not to be suffered to even live. How about Harry Potter? Ooh, you know, that's one that even, even you can make a Baptist church quiet by mentioning that one. Harry Potter is of the devil, all right? You know, you're radical. You know what? It's so full of, you know, wizards and necromancy and spells and all that other garbage. I haven't even seen it, I know that. You know, but I've known people who, who fed that stuff to their kids, you know, and their kids grew up to be wicked people. It's a fact. And I'm not saying every kid that watches Harry Potter is going to turn into some reprobate. But I'm saying you're not doing them any favors when you're giving them this stuff that's promoting this kind of thing. Something that God hates. Something that God says is an abomination that he cast out entire nations out of the land of Canaan over this type of thing. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, you know, that was one that keeps, that's still a show today, I guess. You know, I, I was kind of looking into some of these things. That was a show, like, back when I was a kid, and now they're remaking it, because they can't think of anything new. How about this? How about just Disney in general? Just Disney in general. I mean, I'm sure you can find some Disney movie that isn't all that bad, right? You know, Five or something like that. There's probably a witch in that, I can't remember. But a lot of these Disney movies are the same way, casting spells, you know, doing all these kind of things, promoting this kind of thing to, to the to, to, to children. You know, countless others. D I mean, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, that's another you know, popular game that people, this role-playing game where it's all, you know, wizards and necromancers. not to mention all the video games, right? Look, this stuff is all over the culture. This stuff is all over in the world. You can't step foot out in the world and not run into this type of thing. You're going to run into it. How about Ouija boards? You say, what, Parker Brothers? It was Parker Brothers, right? Really? Dude, I, I could tell you stories about that thing. I mean, I, things that, I won't touch them. I won't go near them. It, you know, when, the, when things start moving around <laughs> on their own, that's, that's scary. You know, you say, oh, it's just a game. No, it's not. Yep. You know, maybe it's just a game, or maybe it's something that's to encourage people to get into the occult. You know, you know the occult is a real thing. It's out there. Right. You know, you start talking about stuff like this, and people start looking at you like you got two heads. But this is, the rea this is reality. You know, there is a demonic realm. Yep. You know, there, is, there are evil spirits out there. We live in a supernatural world. You know, we just can't see it all. 
You know, we shouldn't become obsessed with that. You know, God has limited our knowledge of that. But the occult and things like this, are, you know, the occult, they want to delve into that. They want to delve into things that they ought not to. And they want to encourage your kids. They want to encourage them to get into this kind of thing. Through the Ouija board, through the movies, through the books, through the TV shows, and through Halloween. Through dressing up and doing all these things. How about astrology? That's another one. You know, reading your horoscope. I was talking to somebody recently. I don't know if it was somebody in the room or not, but... Someone was telling me they knew the guy that wrote the horoscope section in, in, the, uh, in the, uh, the newspaper back in the day. And he confessed. He's like, I just made it up. He said, I didn't look at star charts. I didn't do anything. I just sat down and wrote whatever I felt like. But I've known people who've turned to that horoscope page. Oh, today's the day. My lucky numbers are 8, 3, and 4. You know, and something great. Is gonna, you know, just these general vague things, you know. Some stupid fortune. You know, nothing's coming to mind right now, but... You know, I wish I could t come up with a good one, but I'm getting a little tired. But you know what I'm talking about. It's just these general, vague, stupid sayings. Today, you will meet somebody who will, you know, bring you closer on your path to greatness. <laughs> okay? Just, and the guy is just like, yeah, I just made it all up. But people, man, they, they lock into that. They'll get their birth charts made. You know, where were the stars and the planets when I was born at, you know, a certain time in the day? And, you know, it's crazy. And you know what it is? It's all a bunch of just necromancy, you know, just a bunch of, you know, not necromancy necessarily, but it's a bunch of just wizardry, just hocus pocus, mumbo jumbo. It's witchcraft is what it is at the end of the day. It's sorcery. And God, you know, doesn't want us involved in it. And the world is targeting our children with it. Now, why, you think that's a coincidence? You think it's a coincidence that Satan and the world target children with this stuff when they're young and impressionable? I mean, they're like, you know, they're like the cigarette company. Who remembers Camel Joe? Remember that stupid cartoon camel that was always playing pool and smoking? I mean, you thought c dogs playing cards were cool. I mean, he, they had a camel that was, you know, shooting pool. I, you know when I first saw that? When I was like six. We would collect them off the back of cigarettes, you know, the empty cigarette packs. And I remember sitting around in elementary school, hey, I got this Camel Joe. Look at Camel Joe. He's pretty cool. You know? And, it, you know, no coincidence, you know, that when I had opportunity, I smoked. <laughs> you know, I gave it up, okay? been two days. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <coughs> it's not smoker's cough. I was, I was up in Vancouver. It was really bad air quality. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. But go over to 2 Chronicles chapter 33. Look, it's no coincidence that kids are targeted with this stuff. It's intentional. They want to, to, to prey on them because they're young, they're impressionable, and if they can get them into this type of thing at a young age, you know, they can open them up to all kinds of things. You know, I remember talking to somebody once, and I told them that Harry Potter was wicked. You know, and, and, and you know, I, I, don't, I don't think I went so far as to say that their child is possessed. But I definitely said, look, you're definitely opening up possibility of, you know, demonic influence in your child's life. And I remember getting into a discussion with this parent about God. And this particular child that I'm talking about started hissing at me. And he curled up with his mom. And you say, oh, that's weird. Yeah, I thought it was weird too. And mom just like, oh, okay. Hissing at me like a snake. Like, can you imagine I'm, I'm just talking to you and one of your kids just starts hissing at me and glaring at me? That's weird. It's demonic. And this kid was always off playing by himself. You know, casting spells. What are you doing? Casting spells. You know, he was into it. He was into the Harry Potter. And today he's a full-blown reprobate sodomite now i'm not saying that's what's going to happen to your kid but i am saying this it's no coincidence that all of these things are targeted towards children halloween is targeted towards children they want to get this stuff in your kid's head because it does open them up potentially to very wicked things i mean they're targeted because think about it this type of thing this witchcraft this wickedness it t can take over in one generation we could have one generation that's god-fearing Loves the Bible, loves church, all of that. And then the next generation just and wants nothing to do with the Lord. Thank you. Wants nothing to do with God. And is just into all kinds of wickedness. Did I have you go to Second Chronicles chapter 33? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. So this is a 12-year-old taking the throne. And he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen. So he says, look, what he did was wicked, and what he did was an abomination, and it was a heathen practice. 
whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. So in one generation, this 12-year-old takes the throne and turns everything back around the way it was. You know, his dad, Hezekiah, went up, stepped up, loved the Lord, you know, had a great revival, and broke down these, these high places. And his son, in one generation, goes up and sets it back up, and reared up altars for Balaam and made groves, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, right? So there's your astrology, you know. And he said, and served them. He built all altars also in the house of the Lord. I mean, it's not just enough he had the high places. It's not just enough he had it to grow. He had to get into the church house. He had to make sure he corrupted the church house. And nothing's changed. That's what these people want to do. They want to bring in all this pagan idolatry. They want to bring in all these heathen practices even into God's house today. They also built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said in Jerusalem, shall my name be forever. And he built up altars for the, all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord and caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. So he's burning his kids and sacrifice. That's what he's literally doing. Also, he observed times and used enchantments, which is what? Spells. He's observing times, right? He's looking at the astrology. He's looking at the stars. You know, and he's, and he's using enchantments. You know, he's getting involved in casting spells. You know, I don't know what exactly they were doing back then. You know, maybe he was looking at, you know, chicken entrails or something. He used witchcraft, right? And that's another thing he got into, witchcraft. Oh, it's so harmless. But it's so harmless, you're making too big of a deal. Look, it's what wicked people get into. Wicked people, that's what they do to get in contact with demonic things in this world. <clears throat> And he dealt with the familiar spirit. He dealt, that's, a, that's a demon. That's what that stuff led to. You know, and, and people, they start messing around with this stuff. They think it's funny. They think it's a game until they actually make contact with something. And if it ever actually happened, it would send chills up your spine to see something like that happen. You know, and I, you know, my dad, he tells a story. He, because he, he, my dad's side is Native American. And he has his aunt, I think it was his aunt, or maybe it was a great aunt was alive when Black Elk was alive. And Black Elk was the last Sioux medicine man um, that lived. And he's wrote books and stuff like that. And he, he had an aunt, I believe it was. It might have been a great aunt. I can't remember. But he was real little. And he tells the story. And this is my dad, so you never know, right? He, he, comes, he said, tells the story about this day his aunt came over and she was just beside herself. Like she was just really spooked. And she came to him and said, John, I was over at so-and-so's house, and Black Elk, this medicine man, showed up. And when he got there, lights start turning off, cupboards were opening, stuff was moving around. I mean, that's, that medicine man, that was a guy who actually got in contact with familiar spirits. And people do. You know, if, if people want to get in contact with that kind of stuff, believe me, there, there are spirits out there that are ready and willing to communicate and to take over and possess people. And you know what? You start messing around with enchantments and observing times and using witchcraft and get into this occult type of stuff, you just might make contact with a familiar spirit. And you know what? It's not going to be Casper the friendly ghost. It's going to be a fallen angel. It's going to be a demon that just wants to use you and destroy you. And it says he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. So look, nothing good happens when people make, use this type of stuff, this witchcraft, and make contact with these familiar spirits. Nothing good happens. It's not like they're doing it to make you know, the world a better place. It's not like they're doing it so they can glorify God. They're doing it, and he, what, what's the result? They wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord. And that, what does what to the Lord? Provokes him to anger. You know, I don't want God mad at me, so I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. In fact, I'm going to avoid the mere appearance of it. I'm not even going to mess around. I'm not even going to go near it with a 10-foot pole, this kind of stuff. You know, I was kind of reading up on a little bit of this, and there, I came across an article from W Magazine, which I'm assuming stands for Woman Magazine, right? And they had an article called, How to Become a Witch, a Beginner's Guide. It was written in 2018. It was a literal article in a, in a popular women's magazine about how to become a witch. You know, and I've met multiple women that have op been openly said that they're witches. You'll see them, on, they'll put their decal, you know, their little, their little pentagram or whatever on the back of their cars. They're Wiccan or whatever. And they're into it. You know, and this whole article, I'm not going to read it to you for sake of time, because it's a bunch of trash anyway, but it's just explaining all the terminology and how you need to find a coven 
and how you can start sta- you know, casting you know, love spells or you can cause curses on people. And they just they want to give them this power. And, the, and people get into it and they start collecting their, their stone, you know, their seer stones or whatever. They, it's weird. And they start drawing. All, you know, it, it's, it's very strange. But there's articles out there, and I'm not, and this wasn't just like a, a five minute read. This was like an article on how to become a witch, a beginner's guide. And you know what? It's becoming more and more popular in our culture today. You know, like I've said, I've known more than one woman that has just openly said, oh, yeah, I'm a witch. Like it was nothing. Like she could have said, yeah, I'm a dentist, or you know, I'm a nurse, I'm a witch. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, it's no coincidence, you know, that, that one of these protesters that were up at Vancouver, I went on her Facebook page, you know what she claims to be? I can't say the first word, blanky and witchy. You know, and the first word rhymes with witchy, you can figure it out, right? And that's what she claims, she's like, I'm a witch. And there she is outside of the house of God, you know, just spewing her filth. <clears throat> she was the sodomite pre- protester who claimed to be a witch. They're out, they're proud, they're not ashamed of it. Well, you know what? They ought to be ashamed of it. And the Bible says that they shouldn't even be suffered to live. They say, well, that seems drastic. Yeah, but look what they're into. Look at what they want. They want to make contact with the, most, the darkest forces there are and use them to, to vex other people. You say, you're making this up. No, I'm not. I, when I ran a bus route, I knew, I knew a lady who claimed to be a good witch. And her kids came on the bus one day and were, t- were all freaked out because stuff was moving around in their bedroom. You say you're making it up. I don't know, maybe they're making it up, but is that really out of the realm of possibility? That kind of stuff happens. <clears throat> the Bible says in Galatians 5, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Look, we wouldn't have anything to do as God's people with the beginning of that list, would we? We'd say, I want nothing to do with adultery, I want nothing to do with fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. No way. Not me. But then it gets into witchcraft. We're kind of like, yeah, well, you know, maybe we'll make an exception. You know, maybe we'll go ahead and tolerate a witch and suffer a witch. Because, you know, maybe, maybe the witch has something good to say. You know, maybe the witch has, you know, some useful information. Look, I don't care what a witch has to say. Whether she's right about something or not. And the Bible says not to suffer her to live. And, you know, Christians are going soft on this issue. People who claim the name of Christ ought to know better. And they're going soft on it. <clears throat> you know, I've even seen people who are severing relationships with other Christians because, because those Christians dare to be critical of some witch <laughs> or someone who's pac- pa- practicing sorcery. They're, they're, they're making comments and practicing sorcery and they're endorsing this person and then somebody's critical of the witch and they're like, oh, well, I'm gonna, I don't want anything to do with you and just severing entire relationships with people. It's wicked. You know, it's infuriating to see, uh, to see Christians behave this way. They ought to know better than to sit here and tolerate witchcraft in any shape or form. Say, oh, they're not a witch. You know what? If it w- looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Yeah. And when you got people on the, who are talking about, you know, their, their stones and their potions and their vibrations and their energies and all this weird stuff that witches talk about, it's a witch. And look, God draws a hard, you're saying you're not being very nice. Well, you know what? God draws a hard line on this issue, and so do we. At least we should. Amen. You know, if we're going to be right with God, if we're going to actually get up and say that we believe the Bible, if we're actually going to say, well, let's preach the whole counsel of God, then let's do it. And where God draws a hard line, let's learn to draw a hard line. And God draws a hard line on this subject when it comes to witches. It's just that we don't hear it talked about very often, do we? Because quite honestly, you know, we have, that's not a sin that we run into a lot in Baptist churches. You know, the, you, a lot of those other ones on the list, you, you run into the adultery, you run into fornication, the uncleanness, the lasciviousness, the drunkenness, you know, the variance, the emulations, the wrath, the strife, heresies, seditions, that kind of thing you see. But you know what? You don't really see a lot of witchcraft. I mean, that's not to say it never happens, you know, but I haven't had to come to anybody and say, hey, I need to talk to you, you know, about your cauldron. I couldn't notice, you know, you, wrote, you came to church tonight on a broom and, you know, your black cat can't come here. And you need to get rid of that pointy hat, right? <laughs> it's not something that comes up very often. But you know what? That doesn't mean let's go soft on it. Right. It doesn't mean, when it, hey, when it does come up, let's not draw a hard line. Look, we need to draw a hard line on this. Go over to Exodus chapter 22. Uh, Exodus, well, you're in Exodus 22.
Go over to Leviticus 19. I mean, Exodus 22 just couldn't be any clear and concise and just to the point. Suffer not a witch to live. Someone's accused of witchcraft. You know, and that's the criticism that, you know, mockers always bring up. Oh, you, you're Christians and you're witch hunts. And they try to throw out everything good about the Bible and every, you know, then just ridicule Christians because of some, the Salem witch trials or whatever. Look, I wasn't alive then. Those weren't Baptists. I don't know what took place. I really don't care. You know, it, but do you think that witchcraft is something that isn't around? It, it's been around, and, it, and it, it, it's even around today. So don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. You know, people want to run to the other extreme because they don't want to be called, you know, accused of going on a witch hunt, you know, literally. But that doesn't mean we should suffer witches to live either. Now, because it's very clear. I mean, witchcraft is punishable with death. Amen. The Bible doesn't punish a lot of things with death, but it does punish some things with death. Now, I mean, in this verse here, it says in Exodus chapter 22, it says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Verse 19, it goes on and says, Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. I mean, it's like, it's on par with bestiality. I mean, it's just a vile, disgusting thing. It's demonic in nature. Yeah. Because only a, you know, only a reprobate would be into that type of you know, activity. Now, let me just say this. Yes, witchcraft is punishable by death, but it's the government's job to execute. It's not our job. You know, we're not going to grab some pitchforks today and go find, what's her name? J.K. Rowling or whatever. You know, we're not going to hunt her down with torches and rope and, and pitchforks. It's not our job, you know, but it is the government's job. And, and you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to get on the ballot anytime soon. And, and that's going to be my platform. Kill the witches. You know, <laughs> am I holding my breath expecting, you know, one of these candidates to come out against witchcraft? Probably. No, I'm not. In fact, probably a lot of them are there because of witchcraft. You know, that's another story, but it's the government's job to execute. But how about this? Can God's people at least avoid witchcraft? Can we at least avoid it? Can we at least not promote it? Can we at least not, you know, have anything to do with it? Can we avoid the mere appearance of evil? Can we not teach it to our children? Can we not endorse it and promote it to other Christians? <clears throat> Look at Leviticus chapter 19, where you are, verse 30. It says, Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Verse 31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And that's a commandment. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. You know, don't go to the palm reader down here or wherever they are. You know, I don't know if there is one down there. Does anybody know what the palm reader is? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you've seen them, right? You ever been just driving around and it says palm reading? Yep. You know, it's always at like somebody's house or something like that. I've seen them multiple times. You know, you shouldn't regard them. That They should not be given any respect. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. You know, you should get rid of the Harry Potter stuff if you've got it. <clears throat> you know, again, it's the government's job to carry out and execute, you know, capital punishment. But at a bare minimum, you know, ignore and distance yourself from people who practice witchcraft, from people who are into the new age and sorcery and these type of things. You know, and people will scoff at this and go over to Leviticus chapter 20. They'll scoff and they'll disregard all this. But you know what they're in? And they'll say, oh, that preacher... He's off, his, you know, he's off his rocker. He's making a big deal about nothing. But you know what you're really scoffing and disregarding is God. I mean, it's all Bible tonight. That's all everything I've read is out of the Bible. You know, God's the one that's saying, look, regard them not. You know, suffer them not to live. You know, and not, do not seek after them. This is the Bible. Look at Leviticus chapter 20, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever be of the children of Israel, the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth his, any of his seed unto Molech, he shall be surely put to death. And the people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Molech, to defile my sanctuary, to profane my holy name. I'm sure there's nobody in the room tonight that would object to killing you know, people who would sacrifice their own children to Molech, right? And he goes on in verse 4 and says, And if any of thy people of the land... Do any way hide their eyes from the man when he giveth his seed unto Molech and kill him not? Then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off. Look, he's even saying the people who will hide their eyes from this and not call it out and deal with it. He's like, I'm even going to be against that man. Not just the guy who's sacrificing the seed unto Molech, but the people who are just turning a blind eye and just saying, oh, nothing going on over there. 
God's going to go against those people too who are not holding them accountable. And look, God's holding this country accountable right now. God's, you know, you think 2020 has been bad? Buckle up, you know, pucker up, buttercup, because, you know, God's just beginning to hold this country's feet to the fire. I firmly believe that. And, you know, it's got it coming. It's got it coming. And say, well, have we sacrificed our seed unto Molech? Yeah. Abortion. Abortion, abortion, abortion. You know, we talked about this morning. I'm bringing it up again. Because it's a sin in this land. And, you know, there's so many people that are just turning a blind eye to it. You know, like this new Supreme Court nominee that everyone's just all giddy about. Oh, Trump, you know, is, is electing a new Supreme. This is it. We're going to re- overturn Roe v- versus Wade. No, you're not. Look, that issue isn't going anywhere ever. You know why? Because it's politicized. And again, I'm getting to politics. It's something that they can use to leverage votes. You know how many candidates have said, I'm going to overturn Roe versus Wade. I'm against it. And then they get in there, they do nothing about it. They just use it to garner votes from people and to manipulate people. And look, that's the country we're living in, where people are turning a blind eye. And this, this next you know, Supreme Court justice, I'd be great if there was somebody that, that, that didn't, but they're all going to turn a blind eye to it. They're all going to promote it. They're all going to be fine with it. All the politicians and all the people, they're all turning a blind eye. You know what? And God's going to hold those people accountable and cut them off. All that go whoring out after him to commit whoredom with Molech among, from among the people. Look at verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as hath familiar spirits and after wizards and to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Now, is this guy, is this guy actually the wizard? Is he the one that has a familiar spirit? No. He says, verse 6, the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits. It's people who are going to start getting in you know, mixing it up with that crowd, people who are into familiar spirits, the soul that turns after them from God's people and after wizards to go whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Look, you want to get on God's bad side? Start messing around with wizards and sorcerers and witches. Do people do that? Yes. Yes, they do. They start getting into this new age, occult mysticism and all that type of thing. They try to blend it in with Christianity or they just start rubbing elbows with the wrong people. You better be careful who you keep company with because God says, I mean, he seems pretty serious here. I will set my face against that soul. And I said it this morning, I would, there's a lot of other people I'd rather have my, as my enemy than God Almighty. In fact, there's nobody else <laughs> you know, that, would, that would scare me more than God. <clears throat> You know, no one would, you know, object to executing these child murderers, but what about sorcerers? Would anyone object to that? They'd say, well, you know, it's just their thing. It's just their religion. They should be allowed to practice that. It's America, after all. Well, you know, this trumps the the Constitution in my book. This right here. You know, and and if we had a godly country that really loved the Lord, they would follow through on this. And again, I'm not holding my breath. Look at verse 27. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. That's the third time tonight I've turned you to a passage in the Bible that says put witches and wizards and sorcerers to death. The third time. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. God says, you know, I'm not going to lay guilt to you. You're going to get off scot-free. I'm not going to hold you accountable. Their blood shall be upon them. But he does say, look, you need to get rid of them. Look over to, uh, where I guess, shall we go? Go over to Deuteronomy chapter 18. You say, oh, you know, you're, you, you're going too far with this. You know, you're preaching against Halloween, you know, come on, really? Preaching against, you know, the Ouija board, Wizard of Oz. Come on, Brother Corbin, you're going too far. But here's the problem, is that the world dolls up witchcraft. You know, it, the, the Bible is very clear. It calls it an abomination. It calls it wicked. But the world wants to take that which is abominable to God and put, you know, put the, put the nice hairdo on it and the lipstick and dress it up and sell it to you. And put it out there as something as good. The world dolls all this stuff up. But you know what the scripture does? It just cuts right through it and shows us for what it really is. You in Deuteronomy 18, look at verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. 
There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. You ever noticed, have you noticed back in Leviticus and Deuteronomy 18 how child sacrifice and witchcraft kind of go hand in hand? How God want, mentions one and then immediately mentions the other? That's not a coincidence. You know, these type of things that, you know, when you get into, the, you hear these stories about people get involved in these satanic cults, they get into human sacrifice. Yep. I mean, everyone's probably seen the Alex Jones video, right, out in Bohemian, Bohemian Grove, where they burned a human being in effigy. It was a fake human. You know, that's just showing what they would really like to do if they could get away with it. And look, there are places where they, they do practice this. This kind of stuff goes on even today. Right. I believe that. Do I have any proof? The Bible. Because every time you were looking at these passages, you have child sacrifice, human sacrifice, and then God mentions in the next breath, necromancers, wizards, charmers, all of these things that the world is trying to dress up and make it look nice and, and alluring and trying to get your children with and bring them in. You know, all these witches out there, they try to come across as nice. We're white witches. We're good witches, right? And here's the thing, you know, evil people, and I'm kind of getting ahead of my time, my head of myself on First Samuel, but evil people can be nice at times. You know what? Did you know that? Evil people can still possess some semblance of humanity and compassion for somebody. You know, you think about the witch at Endor. I won't turn us there for sake of time. But when, remember when Saul went to the witch of Endor at the end of his life, and he had, he had already cast out all the witches and everything, and he'd put the, you know, he said, look, if there's any witch found here, we're putting them to death. And he goes to the witch of Endor to try to conjure up Samuel. And the witch is saying, hey, look, you can't, I'm, you know, I'm not doing this. You know, Samuel had disguised himself. And he's saying, you know, Samuel might find out and kill me. And he's saying, no, go ahead and do it. And then she does it. And Samuel comes up and tells, Samuel, or tells Saul how he's going to die the next day. And, then, and, all, and so on and so forth. You know the story, right? But do you remember how the witch ends the story? She, she, she flips out and says, oh, you're Saul. You did this to trick me. And she's afraid for her life. And he doesn't do anything about it. But Saul's so distraught about the, the message that he got from Samuel that he's, you know, he's not eating and everything. What does the witch do? She gets him bread. She feeds him. She causes him to lie down. She's nice to Saul. The guy who said, hey, I'll kill you if you're a witch. Now, does that mean she's a nice person? Does that make her a good person because she treated Saul well? Probably to try and save her own skin. Does that make her, oh, you know, she showed compassion on Saul. She's still a witch. She still committed witchcraft. Right. Something that God condemns in Scripture. I don't care what these people want to call themselves. I'm a white witch. I'm a good witch. You're a witch, and that's good enough for me. And look, it's out there. It's everywhere today. <clears throat> and the world's trying to doll it up. They're just trying to, oh, you know, it's just, it's just you know, you know, looking into these searing stones or, you know, burning some sage and some incense and, you know, chanting some things in a coven. It's just the ladies getting together, reading tarot cards and drinking wine. You know, no, what it is is witchcraft. And it's you opening up doors and getting into things that you shouldn't even be going near regarding. <clears throat> you know, and the wit people get into this because it allures to the flesh. You know, people are always looking for like some secret hidden knowledge, aren't they? They always feel like they've got, you know, some, that's what occult means, like secret or hidden knowledge. They want that occult knowledge. They want to they have the inside track on, you know, the spiritual realm. They want to they know things. That know, they want to know and have seen things that nobody else has known or seen. You know, they want to have that. But here's the thing. It's like, what about all the other ladies at the coven? Don't, they're all in on it too, right? It allures to the flesh. People want hidden knowledge. But God says, don't go near it. You shouldn't have anything to do with it because the truth of the matter is is that it's demonic. That's all it is. That's all they're tapping into. They're not tapping into some ancient lost wisdom or something like that. You're tapping into a demonic source is what you're tapping into when you get into stuff. And they want, they want to get into all this to get that knowledge. Why? Because they want to glorify themselves. People get involved in this stuff because they want to be seen as somebody who knows something that nobody else... Oh, you know, this witch or whatever, she has power. She can do this. She can do that. Go talk to the witch. You know, go talk to the medicine man. They're going to fix you up right. They want the glory. It's pride. But here's the thing. God's not going to share his glory with another. 
God's not going to share it. Go over to Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Actually, you know what? Just for sake of time, jump over to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. He said in Isaiah 42, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither praise to given, graven images. God's not going to share his glory with another. And, and, and people that get into this kind of stuff and, and claim to have some, you know, corner market on supernatural things, you know, God's not going to put up with it. The people that want to glorify themselves. You say, well, what should I do? You know, I've got the Harry, I've got all the Harry Potter movies. I've got the entire collection in my house. I've got Wizard of Oz sitting on the shelf. Well, watch it one last time and look into that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Throw, burn it. Get rid of it. Get rid of that, that junk. Don't, get, don't donate it either. Go, you're in Acts 19. Look what they did in Acts 19. Verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, you know, people who are obsessed with casting out spirits. People get way too into this stuff. Even Christians today. They get so obsessed with like, man, I want to go out and I want to cast out some evil spirits out of people. How about you get more worried about putting the Holy Spirit into people? That's more exciting than casting out an evil spirit. And quite frankly, I don't believe that's for us today. And that's another sermon. You know, that was special signs that were given to the early church. I don't think we have that power today. This is a great example of people who are trying to take on that power when they shouldn't. The certain vagabond Jews of verse 13 took upon them to call over them uh, which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there was one seven sons of one there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, the chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped upon them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. That's kind of an interesting story. People what is it? It's people that are trying to get into that, that realm. You know, that, uh, the supernatural realm doing things that are not for them. And you say, oh, but they're trying to cast out demons. Yeah, but you know what? They're trying to, it, it's the, the principle, okay, of trying to get into things that God has forbidden. And God has forbidden these occultic practices of witchcraft and sorcery. You say, why? It doesn't matter why. You know, Deuteronomy was a quick verse. Thou shalt not suffer a wish to live. Next verse. That's God's explanation for you. And you want to read the rest of the, all the verses that I read tonight? And how closely linked they are to some of the most wicked, abominable things that people can do to one another. That's why. And God just says, don't go near it. Don't have anything to do with it. <clears throat> go, now look here, verse 17. You say, well, I've got this stuff. What should I do? You know, I've got the, the, the Ouija board on the shelf. And it says in verse, verse 17, This was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Look at verse 19. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. So they've got these curious arts. You know, they've got, you know, the, the Wiccan. They've got the beginner's guide to being a witch. You know, they've got W Magazine on the shelf. They've got the Harry Potter series. They've got Anton LaVey's writings. You know, the, the, the head of the Satanic Church. They've got, you know, uh, what was that other guy back in the day? Uh, Aleister Crowley, you know, in his, in, his, in his book about how to hold occultic practices. You know, go down to the, you, know, you can go down to the New Age store and get, find all kinds of this stuff. You can get stuff on how to hold seances and what to burn and what to say and what to do. You can go to these different countries where they're into this type of thing. I mean, they're, they're cutting the heads off chickens and lighting candles and, because it works. You know, newsflash, it actually works. You can make contact with the demonic realm. They just don't identify it as such. They, they didn't think it's something else. But that's what it is. You say, oh, I've got this stuff. I've got these books. I've got this type of thing on my shelf. You know what you need to do? You need to burn it. Or you need to, you need to get rid of it in a way where nobody else can get their hands on it. Yeah. And, why, and why, didn't they just go, why doesn't it just say, well, they went home, and you know, they just put it in a box and left it in the attic. Because somebody else might find it. You know, the grandkids might pull it out, whoosh, dust it off, and start reading about, you know, how to hold a seance, how to get involved in curious arts. You know, this is kind of an, an embarrassing confession, but I'll go, I'll, you know, I'm going to put myself out there for, for the edifying of the, the body of Christ, okay? 
when before I got saved, you know, I kind of got into this astrology business for a little while. And I got this book on astrology, you know, and it's like, if your sign is this, if you were born then under this star or whatever, you know, it tells you all the stuff. And then it said, and then it ended by saying, you would benefit greatly from occult practices. That was what it said. And so that's weird. And so I thought, you know what, so I just made one up. I just made up a completely different person, like uh, somebody else was born another day. And you know how it ended? You would benefit greatly from getting into occultic practices. You know what? I bet if I took the time and did it over and over again, all the things they would say about every single one of those people would be told, you would benefit greatly from occult practices. Getting involved with the coven, you, it would be really good for you. Because that's the sign you were born under. You know, this is your reincarnation where you should learn about this stuff or whatever. You know, and praise God I didn't, you know, I had and, and, and got out of that kind of stuff. But you know what? That, unfortunately, I didn't know better. That book is still sitting in a box somewhere down in the Caribbean at my dad's old place. Maybe he got rid of it. I don't know. But you know what? I wish I had been like these people, taking that book and burned it and got rid of it. You say, well, I paid a lot of money for it. You know, it's valuable. This stuff's hard to come by. Well, well, how does this verse end? And they counted the price of them and fit, it found it 50,000 pieces of silver. I don't know how much that is, but I guarantee you it's not cheap. You know, if you wanted to write me a, ch a check today equivalent for 50,000 pieces of silver, you know what I'd say? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, try me. <laughs> I challenge you, go ahead and test me after church. You can write that check, brother, and I will accept it. All right, I'll cash that. But what I'm saying here is it's not cheap. Right. Especially back then, I mean, books weren't just flying off presses. I mean, these were probably like handmade, handwritten. And they're coming down and just throwing in the fire. And they didn't even count, the, they don't even care. They're just like, it doesn't matter. Because they understood what they were dealing with. The occult, witches, sorcery, abominations. <clears throat> That's what you need to do tonight. If you've got this stuff on your shelf. You know what, you need to take Cinderella off the shelf and burn it. Yep. There, I said it. Okay. You need to take Beauty and the Beast off the shelf and burn it. Yep, yep you do. You need, to take, you need to take your Harry Potter series tonight, go home and burn it. I paid a lot of money for those DVDs. Burn them. Get rid of them. Because all they're doing is trying to influence your children into getting into things that they shouldn't be getting into. Or at least making them passive. Make them say, oh, it's all make-believe. It's just, it's no big deal. And then they're going to run into a real witch. Then they're going to run into a real, somebody who's really actually into the stuff and just think, oh, it's not that big a deal. You have no idea what that person's into in their spare time, what they're doing at these covens. God, you know, you'll, they'll become passive at best. But here, here's the thing. Is God passive about the subject? Because everything I've read tonight, it doesn't seem like God is passive about this. It seems like God expects action to be taken. And that's what we see in Acts. They did something about it. You know, God, God goes to a greater degree, doesn't he? He says, let's just kill those people that are into this stuff. <clears throat> You go over to uh, go over to Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter three. We'll 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 end here. Look, God isn't passive on this subject, and neither should we be. We should not be passive about this and just think it's no big deal. It's a big deal, and I'm bringing it up this time of year because we're coming into a month where it's just celebrated. It's going to be all over the television. It's going to be in every supermarket. It's going to be in the movie theaters. It's going, to be in, it's going to be everywhere. They're just going to be pushing the occult for the next, you know, 30 to 40 days. And then they're going to do it again next year, and then the next year, and next year, and next year, and next year, as long as they can. They're going to be pushing this nonsense. I shouldn't even call it nonsense. That's a, that's a very soft term to use for it. It's an abomination is what it is. They're not passive about it, are they? They're not passive about pushing their agenda. They're not passive about trying to influence your kids to get into this stuff. So, you know, I'm going to get up and not be passive about it either tonight. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. And when I read the Bible, is that God is not passive about this subject. God doesn't just brush it off and say, it's no big deal, it's all make-believe. It's not make-believe. They really do get, they get in contact with familiar spirits. It's wicked. We should have nothing to do with the works of darkness. Nothing. Look at Malachi chapter 3 verse 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, as in the former years. And it shall come near, and I shall come near to judgment. And I will be swift, a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swears 
and against those that oppress the, the hireling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and turn the right and turn, uh, 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 excuse me, and turn, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. So look, when God's getting right with people, when people are getting right and God's coming near unto them, and you know they're kind of making up as in the former years. It says in verse four. It says in verse 5, part of that process of God getting, you know, when people are getting right with God and drawing close to God and God is drawing close to them, part of that process in verse 5, when he comes near to you, is in judgment. And I will be a swift witness against who? Against the sorcerers. God's not passive. And when people get right, you know, if God, when God draws near, he deals with these things. You know, you want to get close to God, you want to start to live for the Lord, you need to start getting the things out of your life that God hates. You need to get the sin out. People, they, they wonder why God feels so far away. Well, one, it's because he is. And why is that? Because of our iniquities. Our iniquities have separated us from our God. Often that's what happens. And if people would just start living right and getting these things out of their life, you know what? God would draw near. But he's going to draw near in judgment. You know, you say, oh, God, I want to be closer. He's going to say, get close and say, you need to do something about that sorcery in your house. You need to do something about the, the witchcraft in your house. That's what God's going to say. And if we don't do it, then God's just going to, okay, well, you just stay at arm's length then. <clears throat> God will bless us if we reject this kind of thing and curse us if we don't. And you know what? Let me just end by saying this, because I know this can be a sensitive topic. When I start picking on, you know, Disney movies and Harry Potter and, and Halloween and everything like that, and people say, they, they, they start to have a problem with this subject, even in Baptist churches. I'm not, I'm not stupid. I don't suspect that anybody does, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's somebody out there tonight that says, I have a problem with what you preach. Well, and let me just come out and say it. I'm not the problem. You are. And I think I've made that pretty abundantly clear in the scripture tonight, that God hates this stuff, that he wants it. God's people should have nothing to do with it, and that if you want to get right, the best thing you could do tonight is go home and, and just get rid of that stuff once and for all and never go back to it. You know, and I just, that's all I wanted to say to I just give you a quick warning about witchcraft in our society tonight. Let's go ahead and pray.